Hey everybody, it's Beagle, back for another video. Today, it's all about gear storage, and I'm gonna give you six things that you need to think about as you're planning your storage. Welcome back everybody. So it is day, God knows what, of the uh, COVID-19 quarantine here and uh, I'm really missing getting out of the trail like I'm sure many of you are. But uh, hang in there. I think things are moving in the right direction. Things are starting to open up, uh, especially here in my state. Uh, we're on the way back to normalcy, I hope. So one of the things I've kept myself busy with during all this craziness is trying to solve a problem that's been haunting me for a couple of years now. Have you ever gone out getting ready for a trip and you just can't find that one piece of gear that you know is around you've uh, spent hours on end going through multiple storage bins closets your car trunk all different parts of your house and you just can't find what you need I don't know about you guys but when I'm going out on a trip I need less stress not more of it so what can you do about that well you can choose not to do nothing and continue to live in the madness or you can do like I did and get organized. Now many of you have watched in my past videos, I've mentioned a new home in the works. Well, we are now in that home. Uh, we've been in it for about three or four months now. And since this quarantine started, I've had a lot of time on my hands to get working on that project. And it is now complete. And I'm gonna share that with you here in a little while. But first, I wanted to kind of help out anybody out there in the hiker and backpacker adventurer community that may be looking to do something similar. So before we take the tour, I'd like to go over a quick list that I've come up with of pointers and some topics you might want to consider when you're planning out your build. Now this is obviously not going to be a, you know, all tell all solution or what is available out there in the world for you to do. Uh, but this is more of what I ran into and what I experienced, some things that I had to think about during my storage build. All right, so now for the steps. First step, before you do anything else right now, before you start planning a drawing, before you start thinking, you know, what am I going to use? Purge. Lay out your gear. Get everything out, no matter how big, how small. Everything laid out. Categorize it. Get everything together of similar use, similar type. Do you have duplicates or unused items that just are sitting on shelves and taking up space? Do you have any items that you can donate? Do you have items that you just have too many of? Pick through every item and decide whether you want to keep it or not. This step is really going to come into play later because it's going to make a determination of how much space you're going to need in your end build. So as an example, in my build, when I was doing my purge, I went through and I donated about three or four ponchos to a scout troop. I had a usable, serviceable sleeping bag that was really just a duplicate. And I had a bunch of smaller items, you know, knickknacks here and there that I ended up just tossing because I had other newer, lighter, or, you know, more recent technology gear that I'm utilizing now. So how much extra gear did I really have? Well, put it this way. I gave a closed foam pillow to my dog. In the end, I dumped at least one plastic, large plastic bin worth of gear that would have otherwise been taking up some valuable space. All right, point number two. What kind of spaces do I have to work with? Now that you have a handle on how much you need to store, you can start thinking about how much space you're going to need to store it. What areas do you have in your home that you can use or convert to accommodate that gear? Can you set aside a corner in your garage? Do you have a basement? Do you have an easily accessible attic space? Do you have a spare bedroom? Do you have an empty closet? Even a wall in an uh, unused area of your mudroom? All these can be taken into consideration when you're trying to figure out where you're going to store your gear. Now, as you look and consider these spaces, this is why step one, the purge, is so important because it's really going to come into play on which of these areas you're going to be able to use. If you are renting a home or renting an apartment or staying in a space that you are not able to modify, you're just going to have to work with your existing space. Now, if you're going to be planning on buying or building a home here in the near future, 
now's a good time to be planted on that storage to be put in your floor plan. Now I did just mention something about attics and garages, something I need to put a disclaimer out there for. I don't normally recommend that you store in the garage or unfinished attic space simply for the reason that depending on where you live, and I know a lot of you are all over the world, all over the region, uh, and you're all going to have different climates, but generally speaking, unfinished attics can get up to over 150 degrees in the summertime, even on an 80 or 90 degree day. Uh, and that's not really good for your gear. On the flip side, in the wintertime, up in the attic, in a garage, typically you're dealing with close to or at freezing temperatures, and that also is not good for certain types of gear. From my personal experience in keeping gear in a garage, I will never do it again. Consideration point number three, what organization style are you going to choose? There are so many different types of uh, storage and organization out there that you can explore for days on end online. You can go and browse through your, your Lowe's, your Home Depot's, your hardware stores, and you can spend a lot of time on it. This video is not intended to show you every possibility out there, but I just want to highlight some of the main and most common methods of doing these storage areas. Stack shelving, which usually requires assembly, can be found at your local hardware stores. Plastic and composite ones typically have a static shelf height, while some of the metal units have more adjustable shelf heights. Cube storage, otherwise known as cubby storage, can be hand-built or store-bought. In my opinion, if cubes are your only storage, build your own is the way to go. The store-bought ones are great additions to complement your other shelving, but you're going to have to buy and mount so many of them that it's going to be cost prohibitive. So wire shelving systems are typically included nowadays with any newly built home, but they're typically only installed as a one level of shelf per closet. While the commercial wire shelving gives you the ability to customize the design, the downside is that it is going to be a lot more costly than most of the other suggestions I'm making here, especially the adjustable or fast track styles. Be aware, most brands are not compatible with each other, so make sure you find out what brand your existing shelving is and be sure to match the parts. One of the most common areas of waste space in a home is often located underneath stairways. Take example those leading to a basement. Sharp architects are going to sometimes use this space for a closet, but most of them will just cut costs and close it in. If it is unfinished, it would be a good idea to build storage shelves. If it's drywalled in, cut out some cubby spaces and remove non-load bearing studs to create a space. In our particular home, we had it closed in for now, but we can wait and decide on the closet or storage shelf or cubby options later. Now for spaces where shelving is not feasible, you might just have to resort to stackable plastic bins. It's a great solution to maximize your storage capacity without the real estate hit. There are different styles, sizes, and materials to consider. Check your local hardware stores for basic choices or something like the container store where your options are going to be limitless. Point number four, categorize your gear. As you did with the Purge, categorize your gear and keep like items together. Figure the storage area needed for each group of gear and if appropriate, store it in its own storage bin or cubby. Label the bins with label maker or some other type of method. Point number five, fill in spaces. Maximize the use of your designated area by hanging smaller items on hooks, nails, whatever between larger items. An example would be your trekking poles. You can hang them between your backpacks on a peg. In unfinished basements without insulation, the floor joists are typically ignored and left open. You can utilize the space by mounting some type of shelving, whether it be wire, wood, or otherwise, to create your own little cubbies. So my sixth and final main point here is to use gear to store gear. Some gear is naturally meant to store other gear. Backpacks are the best example. You can store a few items that go with you on every trip, Another option could be small ditty bags or the bags your sleeping bags normally are sold in. Uh, sometimes trail pads have their own little bags. These are all typically not used on trail, so you can use them in a quote unquote category of small items at home. Hang them from a the peg or the ceiling, wherever you can find space for them. Now, just as an optional or a bonus point here to make is personalize your space. Me personally, I have gone in and started decorating my uh, closet with some pictures and smaller items that, you know, things that mean to me with my outdoor adventures. If you can personalize it, you're going to enjoy and appreciate that space a lot more. 
All right, boy, so I am currently down in my basement of the home, which is where we uh, built my closet. Uh, actually, right now, I am in my uh, office area, which is where I, I work out of here, uh, do my video editing out of here, uh, multi-purpose room. But anyway, I planned the hiking closet to be right close to there because it just kind of made sense to keep it close by. So um, it's right through this door right here. You can see it's just at the bottom of our basement area, big family area down here. Uh, yeah, don't ask about the tent. So uh, right through that door is the product that I came up with, and I'm getting ready to show it to you now. Let's take a look. All right, so welcome to my gear storage closet, guys. Um, one of the things that I wanted to happen when we built this is it needed to be out of the way of the home, it needed to be dedicated space, and I wanted it nearby my office where everything else happens. So both of those did take place, um, or all three of those did take place. Um, this wall right here backs up to the closet that you just saw in my office space. So they're pretty big, and if I need to take this wall for some reason in the future, if I wanted to expand this room, I definitely have the ability to do it. It's not structural. It's not holding any weight or uh, load-bearing weight, so we can knock it down and move it back or eliminate it, whatever we need to do. As you can see, everything that I talked to you about on those six points earlier, I basically incorporated in here. Um, single room, uh, there is nothing else stored anywhere in the house as far as gear goes. Uh, all of my gear has got its own space as far as the categories go, the type of gear. Uh, for me, it's efficient, it's nice and condensed. And I'm not going to have any problem finding things when I'm getting ready to pack up for a trip. So, just take a quick tour here real quick of uh, the room. On the left-hand side here on this wall, I've got some uh, storage space for my backpacks. And what I did, basically, I put a, uh, two rows of wooden boards screwed into studs so they'd be load-bearing. And I have some miscellaneous shaped and length hooks that I screwed in to which the backpacks are actually hanging off of. In the back here, uh, for my sleeping bags, I wanted to store them the right way. And really, the best way to store sleeping bags is hanging them from the tabs that they're built with. They, uh, pretty much every sleeping bag that's good quality sleeping bag is going to have either one or two loops on the end. And that's what I did. I built uh, for those loops uh, three-quarter by two or three-inch boards to the top and I screwed them in with uh, onto the floor joist up above in the drywall. Uh, I had to do that because the joists just weren't right in the right place for those hooks to work. So by putting the wood up there, it gives me some space to be flexible on the width of the hooks. It works for me because then you won't have that degradation of your uh, down or synthetic material that happens over time when you start to store them compressed. This particular wall right here, I didn't put much down low, but up top is my headgear. Again, I've used the wood for flexibility on the positioning of the loops. For the shelving system over here on the right wall, I used the Closet Made product. Uh, there's Closet Made, Rubber Made, and some of your Home Depot, Lowe's, etc. brand name shelving. Uh, closet Made seemed to have the best fit for what I was looking for. Plus the rubber made for some reason in this area started to be phased out. Nobody's carrying all the pieces anymore. So this made the most sense. I did use the fast track system, which um, once you look at it, you'll see there are slots that you can adjust the shelving mounts or the brackets and you can make the shelving spacing more or less as you need. So basically what I store over here in this corner is my clothing. So up top I've got my hat, buffs, gloves, socks, underwear, and yeah, you guys have seen my underwear now. Uh, my tops, my base layers, rain pants, shorts and pants, and down below are all of my hanging sweaters, jackets, rain gear, and my life preserver I use when I go canoeing or paddling. In the middle, uh, again, a piece of board with some miscellaneous hooks that I can hang things from, with these little ditty bags. Uh, if I wanted to, I got my micro spikes, extra laces, my belts. These here are my uh, dry bags that I use uh, inside my pack or inside the canoes. And the lower portion here, if you can see it, it's uh, all of my shoes. 
Uh, I currently have about six pairs of various shoes that I use uh, between my trail runners, hiking boots, water shoes, I even got some uh, aquatic boots, which are tactical boots that you, uh, they got the holes in them, drains out the water really good. So down below here I have two plastic tubs right now. Uh, they will probably go going away in the near future. Uh, the first one down here just has all those extra bags I, I spoke about earlier in the video. These are just basically extras that I talked about earlier in the video. Bags that came with the sleeping bags or other gear that I just don't use. I can use them to store other gear within. And this one down here has some oversized pads, uh, fold-up chair, things I don't really take on trips much. Uh, they're just stored out of the way. And on the bottom over here next to that I have a thermorest pad that you can't really compress. You can only roll it up so it's pretty big. And a couple of uh, sands bug shelters here. I use those when I go on either local camping or sometimes I take them with me on the Boy Scout camps. Alright, upper part of the shelves on this side, uh, same thing. It's the, uh, the closet made shelving. And uh, it is, I didn't mention it over on this side, but it is the close knit shelving is the wires are a lot closer together they have different shelves of varying widths on the on the wires this one made more sense to me because things set on a nice a lot better than they do on the wider spacing they tend to you know fall between the wires and tilt and i just don't really prefer that but anyway starting up top here is uh my paddle maps and hiking trail maps uh, some of them are in bags some are folded right now uh, to the right of that, I have my waterproof notebook that I can use for taking notes or whatever I need to write down on trail when I'm on downtime. Uh, I have a binder here that I use whenever I'm planning a trip. I pretty much print everything out and put it together in a binder to keep everything nice and organized. Uh, I got a couple of the trail books here that I'm reading right now, like the JMT, and uh, that also has my Appalachian Trail Guide on it. Right below that, uh, everything on this bin is water and water purification related. I've uh, got some cups that I use for tea or coffee or whatever I want to do on the trail. Uh, right next to it I have the utensils and bowls and cups, expandable type. See the stomach, these are awesome. And to the right back of that are my canteens. So right next to that is all my stove and gas. Right here is anything that is fire starting related. I got some waterproof matches, some uh, lighters, magnesium, uh, anything that you need to use to start a fire. I'm a big proponent of bear canisters, so I do store them in here as well. They got some leftover food. I don't have everything out of them in here yet, uh, but in this bin here is all of my dehydrated meals. And this is my cozy. So everything here on this shelf, uh, starting from the left, this bin is anything first aid related or hygiene related. A uh, bunch of miscellaneous items in here, bug sprays, ointments, my first aid kit, and that's got my uh, knee brace on there as well. I have uh, my camp towels, bandanas. In here is uh, miscellaneous water sports things that I use to, uh, I kind of hook them to my glasses so if I lose my glasses they float. Uh, same thing with keys. Uh, if I'm carrying some keys, I want to make sure I put the float on that. Have my electronic, uh, my lights, my LEDs. Uh, pretty much don't hike with these, but I do with the uh, headlamp that's in there. Over here is all my electronics. Uh, anything from battery chargers to solar chargers, anything I use for the cameras on trail. And right next to that, I got my Garmin in reach. Last but not least, lower shelf here has all of my shelters, some extra summer sleeping bags that can't really be hung. They're kind of cheapies. Uh, they only have hooks on them or loops on them. Uh, next to that is all my trail pads. Uh, everything here is air with the exception of a compressed foam that I have in the back there. Everybody, one disclaimer about the stove gas being in here. Right now I'm storing it in here. Uh, not a good idea though. I recommend storing this outside of the house, either in your garage or better yet, even in a shed if you have it available. Uh, if one of these leaks inside a house, that's, uh, you know, you're gonna have a big problem. Uh, so I highly recommend these not be stored indoors. Okay, well, one final thing that I'd like to discuss that I talked about earlier in the video, and that is the personalization of space. 
Um, still a work in progress. I've ordered some prints that they haven't come in yet. Uh, mail is being a real problem with that. But as you can see up here, I can't mount anything in here that uh, is load bearing because it is an actual uh, air return for the HVAC system. Uh, but I can use some small pictures or small thumbtacks to mount uh, in this thin drywall. So I'm using that area for my decorations, pictures, whatever else I want to put up there to kind of make it feel like my, my hiking environment. So right here next to the door coming in, there is some more space for decoration if I want to use it or even gear. Uh, very flexible. Right now I just got my little AT Blaze hanger. And uh, right now that's all I got for decoration, but I'm going to work on that. All right, guys, well, that's it in a nutshell. Uh, this is my solution, my build. This worked for me. And the most important thing to take away from this video is whatever you guys come up with needs to work for you, it needs to make sense to you. Uh, hopefully all the ideas I gave you here in this video will just help you to come up with uh, your own ideas, get your creative juices going. Uh, you know, there are so many different things to do out there, so many ways to do it. So I'm really eager to see what you guys come up with. Uh, for those out there that already do something and have a storage area, what do you guys do? You know, share it with the group. Be sure to put the comments down uh, below. Uh, share your designs, your suggestions. Uh, I'd love to see the other solutions out there. As always, guys, thank you for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you like what you see. And don't forget to subscribe. You'll get notices whenever a new video is released. Again, thanks for watching. Be safe, and I'll see you on the trail soon.